my following plan is uh, we will do a few serious slides on base, patient extraction and maybe we can take a, a few minutes break before we go into the the hands-on session is that uh, is that okay yes okay let's do five minute break okay uh, so, uh, i mean five minutes break after the this yeah. just yeah. this okay so we resume at 947 uh after after these initial slides we will resume so 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 we are oh, not I'm so break now uh, not we're now. Okay. Break okay. After Wei Yao is done with uh, the remaining of the remainder of the slides. Okay. So, so I, I put in these slides just uh, be, because you just heard from from JF about Bayesian analysis yesterday, and today's uh, uh, hands-on exercises are uh, application of these principles, but uh, with some more complications. So. So I think it might be be good to 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 give a recap of what what is talked about yesterday. So this uh, Bayesian parameter extraction try to deal with such a problem. Uh, you are given a model which allows you to compute some observables y uh, at a given input parameters. So both y and the x are vectors. So you ha you can have uh, multiple parameters and uh, compute multiple observables uh, and you are given the prior belief on the true value of the parameters before you compare it to some uh, newly measured data set and you want to use the newly measured data set to update uh, the probability distribution of the true value of the parameters which we call the posterior and this problem is solved by the base theorem uh, where <coughs> <clears throat> where the posterior of the parameter given the model and the experimental data uh, equals this uh, so-called likelihood function times your prior belief divided by a normalization because it's the probability distri distribution so you have to normalize to one. Uh, but uh, for this lecture and exercises, we're not so interested in the normalization, the so-called evidence. Uh, we're more focusing on the prior and the likelihood function. So as introduced yesterday, this likelihood function is often very complicated unless you have a very uh, simple uh, process uh, or, or model. So likelihood function is often assumed to be taking this multivariate Gaussian form. So uh, if you take the log of it, it contains a constant normalization part and this quadratic for a quadratic form. So dot y measures the discrepancies between the experiments and your model prediction at a certain parameter point. And sigma contains the uncertainty covariance matrix, including both theoretical uncertainties and experimental uncertainties. So the workflow for a simple Bayesian analysis <coughs> uh, looks like this. So you, you start with a parameter space with some prior knowledge. Uh, you, you run through model uh, and get the predictions. And then uh, you, you apply the base formula to combine the predictions and the experiments to get uh, the posterior probability distribution. So it's very straightforward, but it really relies on that your model is simple enough. So it is fast and easy to get an arbitrary prediction to, to get a prediction at an arbitrary point in your parameter space. However, this is not the case for uh, the bulk evolution model, at least. For example, to get a uh, prediction with reasonable uh, statistical uncertainty uh, using the hydrodynamic-based evolution model for heavy ion collisions, you need hundreds to thousands of computing hours at uh, a single parameter point. Therefore, we cannot just apply such framework directly. We need to take a detour. So we don't want to compute over and over again the full model at an, an arbitrary parameter point. So instead, we design a carefully chosen set of uh, 
parameter points, we call them design points. Here is labeled by index i. So we, we, we compute the full model calculation on a finite set of parameter points sampled in the parameter space. And we use this finite set of information to train a thing called emulator. So, so at this point, you can understand emulator as a fancier version of interpolator. Uh, so, so it's trained on, on some uh, uh, finite knowledge on, on how the model behaves. And they try to learn how to infer why given an arbitrary point in the parameter space. We will see how it works in the example. So this uh, reduces to evaluate the full model over and over again to just evaluate at a finite set of in input points. Uh, but again, like I, like, I, like I said, so this y, y uh, vector of observables is a very high dimensional object. For example, for this hydro model, you can produce, you can predict uh, flow as function of centralities, uh, multiplicities, uh, production yield for different species of uh, hydrons. Therefore, this, this, co this column of Y contains maybe uh, uh, a dozens or hundreds of numbers. And it's quite impractical to train an emulator for each of them. Uh, <coughs> <clears throat> the efficient way to do this is to do a dimensional reduction. So dimensional reduction is that uh, uh, you reduce uh, tons of uh, observables to an another set of observables. So this other set of observables Z <clears throat> has the property that its dimension is much smaller than your original observable space. However, it contains enough degrees of freedom so that up to controlled uh, truncation uncertainties, you can actually go back and forth mapping uh, this uh, new set of observables back into the original back observables or uh, vice versa. And such a process is done by the principal component analysis. We'll have also have uh, an exercise for that. So now you only need to train emulators on just a few principal components uh, to mimic the variance of dozens of uh, uh, observables as function of parameters. Therefore, the final workflow for this, uh, we call it uh, emulator assisted Bayesian analysis look like this. So you, after you trained the emulator using the finite set of the model predictions, uh, you really don't need the model anymore. So you start from the parameter space, uh, given a set of parameters, you want to make predictions, use an emulator to predict in the principal component space what the principal component Z looks like, and use the inverse transformation of the dimensional reduction to go from the principal component space to the real physical observable space, and that's your prediction. And, and from this point now, you can apply the usual uh, uh, machinery of Bayesian analysis to define uh, your posterior. So is there any question about this uh, framework? I don't see anything. OK, okay then uh, just a heads up for the, uh, the exercise. Uh, we'll have a separate exercise on Gaussian process emulator, uh, another one on principal component analysis to get familiar with how you reduce uh, something with many degrees of freedom to just a few effective degrees of freedom. And finally, applying this uh, above framework uh, workflow to a real problem that is uh, fitting the Trento in each condition parameters by comparing some of its event properties to a selection of experimental observables. Okay, so if there's no further questions, I think I will pause here. Yeah, let's right. take... Um... Let's take a break until 10 a.m. East Coast time, 10 minutes, and then we'll reconvene for the exercises. Okay. Oh, by the way, can I uh, do a pull that to see if people have uh, successfully installed the condo environment or be able to write on binder? Okay, everybody who has already installed the condo environment, um, please uh, put in a yes.
All right, we roughly have about half of the participants who have already installed it. We have four no's. Uh, the no's, if you have uh, problems, you know, go, go to the Slack channel and ask some of the TAs whether they can help you. And we will reconvene at 10 a.m. Thank you. Okay, thank you.